clap circle sync. <laughs> Hello and welcome to this episode of The Sunday Social. Today I am joined by Liv Dawson, who is a singer-songwriter. Uh, yeah, you're a musician really, aren't you? You're an artist. <laughs> I am an artist. <laughs> and um, if you don't know, The Sunday Social is a podcast in which I talk to people in the music, entertainment, social media industries about how they got to where they are today, and I make them brunch. Oh, <laughs> sweet. What can I say? I'm a good egg. <laughs> and what we had today was requested by, I think your manager, I'm not even sure if you knew, Probably. but we've, he was like, a continental breakfast. Yeah. So That's I've gone favorite. with, good, that, that's very reassuring. Healthy. Yeah, I've gone with some fruit, we've had some pastries, I have not touched the pastries, I had a bagel. Everyone's left that. For people, yeah. It's not. <laughs> and then there was the options of like, I don't know, oh, I've got mini cereal boxes. Thank Just you. Just in case, because I can't eat any of these, which is so yeah. sad. But I don't think any of it's in shot anymore. I don't know. <laughs> It'll be fine. So, yeah. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Yeah, it's so nice me. to have you here. You're the first person that's been on this that I haven't known directly beforehand mm. in some way or another. So it's been like, and you've, you've got like your manager here and it's really yeah. exciting for me because I'm like, this is the first one in the new place. <laughs> it, yeah. feels, it feels like a proper thing. Yeah, it's good. definitely. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> Yay. So... Um, I normally ask people how they introduce themselves or how they describe themselves. Mm -hmm. um, I've described you now, but how would you explain what you do? I am a singer-songwriter, um, mainly a singer, and I've been putting out music for about two years now, um, and I do like R&B pop and mainly pop now. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, singer-songwriter. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. And I mean... The big thing that I found from kind of Googling what you, like how you got to where you are now is one, you are 19, mm -hmm. you are a small fry in the big world <laughs> of the music industry, but two, you've been in the music industry for about five or six years. Mm -hmm. I thought that was so interesting because when did you release your first single? It was like 2016? Yeah, so my first single was 2016 um, and I just put it out. Um, it was like the first song that I really liked to that really complimented me and I kind of took ages finding it like I've been writing songs for about five years and I was at a good age I was like 17 so I felt like the right time to put out a song and we just let it like do its thing yeah and it's probably my favorite song really I really like it I think it's wonderful and I think it's so soulful as well yeah um it's called tapestry, it's called tapestry. <laughs> <laughs> and it's yeah it's really like yeah, soulful and warm and yeah. I think as well it was quite different to what else was out at the time. Mm, mm, yeah. Which was really cool. That's why I really liked it. Just like felt like me in a song. Yeah. And then I just progressed from there and now I do more pop yeah. songs. But it got there in the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And how was that? So how was finding your style and writing? Because I asked my housemates, I was like, what would you ask someone who's like <laughs> a singer songwriter and is like eighteen or nineteen years old? And they, who, but he's been writing for years, mm -hmm. and they were like, "Well, obviously, we want to know how someone's writing has changed, and how that how that process has been mm -hmm. uh, from beginning to end." Because you've written through your teenagers, mm -hmm. that's incredible. That is so so scary. It's a peak time. It's like <laughs> a like the hormones are flying everywhere, and it's like especially because being young, like I definitely I didn't really go to parties or anything. I was kind of like. I done that like in my later years yeah um, so I didn't have much to write about so I was kind of writing about my friends and like my family and people were just close to me and the people who I was writing with like, I asked them about what they write like was going through and whatever but yeah like my writing has changed a lot like when I was younger I was very shy and like I never used to really like input in my sessions and just because being a girl and like a very young girl in the music industry is like quite quite scary I'd say yeah and then like as I've kind of grown up and like realized that you can make yourself seen and known and heard and like I definitely like put more input into my sessions now yeah. um because they're all kind of it's right about me <laughs> yeah how has that been as well like doing doing music as a really young woman mm -hmm. Because I know we talked about this a bit before, on the, yeah. on, like when we were just hanging out. But yeah. I can't imagine what that experience is like. Mm -hmm. 
especially in sessions with I'd imagine mainly older men yeah yeah and I was like probably 14 when I started writing so I mean especially when you've got anxiety and when you're like stressing about how you're going to be in these sessions and just talk to these people and then having to write with them is very difficult and so I used to just take a back seat and just kind of sit and watch them do the writing um so it was very scary and like now I write with a lot more girls and like I love writing with guys I love writing with girls but I think having the balance is really good just because you can get very caught up and like forget that there are actually women in the industry <laughs> oh isn't that scary though yeah, it's quite scary yeah it's it's something that you like definitely become more known of but I feel like we are slowly getting better and better at like you know getting more women involved and like you know because women can be amazing writers as well they are pretty good <laughs> yeah I have a lot of female writers that I love and like I just I get so much like enjoyment out of writing with them so that's really nice that's good yeah I can't yeah I can't imagine so <laughs> so weird and did you notice as well like yeah also were you in like industry events from a really young age or is that all started kind of now when there's more momentum I feel like I pick and choose when I want to go to events like it depends on how I'm feeling especially how my day is going because most of the time like I'm writing every single day and um, like cause I'm slowly getting my album together um so <laughs> and like it just if I have an event like say like tonight I'd be like okay how am I feeling like because it is a lot to deal with like it's it's very high energy like the room will be very high energy and you've got to be up for talking to people so if you're feeling a little bit like anxious then I'll probably just like avoid it yeah but I did used to go to a lot more events but now I just kind of pick and choose because I'm like it takes a bit of a strain yeah like it, but it's fun they are fun to go to but just mm. when you're in the right state of mind do you have the thing as well where like people you know are trying to introduce you to more people because mm. like in the YouTube ones there's no one really like the managers and stuff don't really attend the events unless it's for their talent yeah. thing. Yeah. So you you always have to introduce yourself on a level with someone else. Yeah. You never get the whole the whole like oh I think you should meet da 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 da. His that this must person. be scary. Like yeah, just, that's you know. the bit that takes a lot of my energy and yeah. those things. And but I think it's more stressful. Like I can choose not to introduce myself to someone, mm. and I like the fact that I don't have to. You be don't need to. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I can just go with one person and stick with that one person. Yeah. Whereas. And imagine for you, it's a lot of. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hi, yeah. hi. Important A and R. Really nice to meet hi. you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Got to sell oh. myself to you now. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, it is like it's quite scary. But I feel like I've, I have a really close relationship with my manager, which is really nice. So we will just go to events together and then, like, see who we want to talk to and who we don't because yeah. he'll know most of them. So he'll be like, okay, we'll avoid this person, <laughs> and then we'll talk to like certain people, but we have a good time on our own so that's always fun yeah that's good yeah um i was gonna ask you as well about you've just moved to london yes and <laughs> it's i love like the whole area you're living in i think north london's amazing mm -hmm. and like are you seeing shows at the moment like what do you like what do you not like or are you just like at home watching Beyonce at Coachella, like <laughs> yeah, like that took about two days to do that because she had such a long performance. <laughs> yeah, I literally sat in my bed. I got a cup of tea. I got some like snacks. You have to be prepared. I'm ready. I had my dinner. I was like, okay, I'm ready. I'll watch this now. <laughs> it was amazing. Like, that's just a whole other thing. Like her performance. Yeah. But yeah, I go to like I like to go to gigs like every now and then. I feel like I'll go with like my friends and then like enjoy yeah. the gig for like as a fan. Yeah. And like I hate it when. I don't hate it, but like when it's kind of a thing where it's like, oh, you need to meet this person after, like, you need to do this. I just like to go and enjoy it and like yeah. really take it in. Um, I went to see Julie Lipa on Friday and she was amazing. It's <gasps> been so she good. She was so good. Like, oh, her songs are really good. Like, I didn't realize how many bangers she's got. Yeah. And you like sit there and you're listening and you're just like, wow. Because she's only got one album, right? Yeah. So we were kind of thinking like, there's not many songs for her to sing but she just filled it up so well and she was like dancing the whole time really like like, she, like choreographed kind of like choreographed kind of like she had dancers with her but she was just amazing okay and she must just be so fit like i just i was like getting tired watching her <laughs> i always think that about these female performers i always think little mix are like the goddesses of it's crazy pop music but then you see them do all their choreograph choreography and all the dancing and every time I see it I just think how on earth do you learn this that fast yeah do you know how to harmonize and do this and sing oh and God. do this 
It's a whole other level. Yeah, it's unbelievable. And having the energy for, they do, what, two hour shows? When they're doing stadiums, yeah. I don't know how. It's mental. I don't know how. I don't know how they do it. (laughs) It's like entertainment. It's not just being a singer, it's like the whole thing. Yeah. It's like entertaining people. It's like Beyonce though. Yeah. How does she do it? Without I going know. off key. No, I totally agree. I always wonder. But then she's got what? She's 36. Yeah. So she's had over a decade. Oh, yeah. Of probably like two decades. Yeah, probably yeah. actually. Yeah, because they came out when they were 18, Destiny's yeah, Child, yeah. didn't they? She's had a long time, but. Yeah. So she's, she's like she's like a rock star now. She's, she's ready like to Prince. Go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she can do it. Yeah. Um, speaking of time and like how long you've been doing stuff. Because, again, I think this is so interesting. I wanted to know more about, like, what, how did you get the beginning part of that ball rolling? Because I think a lot of people are young musicians. They start out, a lot of people will find this podcast because they'll go, oh, well, how, how do you get discovered? Mm-hmm. And whilst you may not be able to answer that particular question, mm-hmm. I'd love to know about what, how it happened for you. Mm-hmm. So I have like always been so into like the old fashioned way of just going out and gigging. Yeah. And for me, like I was in the generation that was like kind of like there wasn't really much Instagram. I don't think Instagram was a thing when no. I was fourteen. Like that wasn't <laughs> I didn't even know what that was. And social media wasn't a big deal. So I just had to go out and gig. Yeah. And like I only really discovered that I wanted to be a singer when I was like thirteen, like I was like, I want to kind of do this. Like, I was in school, so I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And my dad would, like, drive me to, like, these gigs, like, yeah. in London. And I had to take time off school, and I would, like, gig them, like, and just literally go with my friend who played guitar um, and sing covers of, like, Amy Winehouse. Really? And literally just go. And then I met, like, writers, like, that would come to the shows, like, because I was just doing it so much. Like, everyone would kind of, like catch on and be like oh let's go to the show and then I met my publisher who is like like I've met for so like I've known him for so long now and then I met my manager and like everything but I think it's just literally from gigging like just getting you get getting yourself out there yeah and just doing it because people forget that like whilst obviously people who are really on the ball like the (laughs) the scooter broads of like YouTube management do check YouTube and do check Instagram Mm -hmm. and trying to find people that way lots of people are still going to shows Yeah, yeah like lots and lots of people like the, at least the culture in London yeah. and I'm sure in other cities around the world is very with the music industry it's very like you go to shows and you go to shows and mm. you go to shows yeah it's a very like it's there's so many venues in London like it would so be many. silly not to gig in London I think if anyone's trying to like break into the music industry or like whatever just go out and gig your songs like yeah, because you weren't you weren't based in London though right you were driving in from yeah so outside. I was I was living like dark depths of <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> um, so I had to get out there and literally go to London and like you know it wasn't like an easy trip on the tube it was like yeah. an hour <laughs> yeah but it's still yeah for people who don't know sorry is what like an hour out of London yeah about an hour and a half yeah so, so it's long but it's it's doable it's doable but you do need to yeah as you said like you were missing a bit of school you were mm. probably doing weekends having to be really organised yeah yeah <laughs> and then so wait, it was you and a guy with a guitar yeah yeah so he's like my best friend um and he like knew my dad and like he kind of got into contact with me and he's just a really good guitarist and yeah. he comes to all my shows now and like watches them and he's like oh, I'm so proud <laughs> so but we like we just had a thing that was really like special and he just got the way I wanted to like sing and he didn't rush me when I was he was playing the guitar and everything which is I don't know just something I really liked yeah but now you don't you don't really write on guitar or with guitar, do you? No, no, no. It's, I, it's all on piano, really. really. Sometimes it's on guitar. But I always start with, like, an, an instrument. Like, I'll never... Like, sometimes I'd start with, like, a beat. But I just don't like it, really. I like doing it the organic way. You're the first person to say that to me. And I think that's really, really interesting. Because I, I find, yeah, like, writing to a beat really difficult at the mm. moment. I've always wondered if anyone else does or if I'm just, like... A bit ADD, <laughs> basically. It, feels, it just feels so, like, I don't know, boring. Like, after you yeah. listen to it, like, for so long, you're just like, oh, my God, I don't know if I can even, like, think of a melody right now. Yeah, I find that really challenging. Oh, that's really interesting. And so, and you're, 
you are in session after session after session at the moment. Yeah, at the moment. It yeah. Sounds really like that. It's pretty intense. <laughs> <laughs> but I do love it. I love writing. I think when I'm with the right people, like there's always times when I've had a bad session or just if I'm not feeling up for it and like the only thing I want to do is just go home and sleep. And But most of the time I'm with my friends and like when you've got a good surrounding, like good people surrounding you, you always feel more motivated. Yeah, totally. And just, it's, it should be like fun. It shouldn't feel like a, like a job. Yeah, definitely. I think that's the beauty of a creative job, mm. that it rarely feels like proper, proper work. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, now, right, let's talk about Khalid. <laughs> you went on a tour with Khalid. Was that a UK tour? So it was around Europe. No way, you did yeah. a European tour. Oh my God, that's so like cool. three weeks. <laughs> oh, how was that? How has it been touring? Is this your first kind of it bigger was, tour? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like my first kind of big venue in a way yeah um I went on tour with Hon who were like a cool band they're very cool they're really cool um this was like in 2017 2016 and I'd done Roundhouse which was like amazing but I was really ill so I couldn't really enjoy it oh really um so this tour was amazing and just being able to live my best life was so fun (laughs) I just took like every opportunity that's so cool it was so fun it was so did you see any really good cities? Uh, my favourite was probably Paris. Um, I love Paris. I'd never been like properly before, and it was just, I don't know, it's very magical. Felt yeah. Like I was in a movie the whole time. <laughs> it really is. I think Paris is wonderful. I took myself there last Aww. year because I had yeah broken up with someone, and I was like, "Fuck this! I'm going to oh take God, myself to Paris." A day. Yeah. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> it, was, it was so much fun. But now, yeah, Paris is just a magical city, I think, for so many people. Yeah, it's very special. It feels, like, quite close to London. Like, it doesn't feel too different, but it's, yeah. like, I don't know. Everyone was nice there. Yeah. It didn't feel fake. And it felt, like, not overwhelming, which yeah. I don't really like it when you go to a city and you're just like, oh. Yeah. So going, it felt like home. Oh, that's which was nice. nice. And it's close enough as well, isn't it? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I'm going to check if I have any other questions, like specific <laughs> ones, on my phone. I always make notes. I think people know this who watch the podcast, but like, I always make notes about what I want to know. Aww. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> Big thing, you've worked with Disclosure. Yeah. This is like, this is something it seems like all the music blogs pull up about you. is like, Liv Dawson co-signed by Disclosure. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you've written with Disclosure and you've worked with Disclosure. Mm-hmm. What is it like working with peop- with big names in the industry or people that you admired personally before you met them? I've always wondered this because in YouTube it's very different. People are very much all just people. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't really get that starstruck by anyone. Mm-hmm. But I'd imagine music is very different because you have an emotional connection yeah. to something they've done. Yeah. I... I loved them, Ooh, like, sorry. before and after. <laughs> yeah, I'm just scratching my foot. Um, yeah, you loved them before and after. I loved them before and after, and, like, I didn't really... This is quite, quite bad, but I didn't really know what they looked like before, because they draw you don't them. see their face. No. Is it them even... Is it one of them even on the covers of the... They are on the cover, like, yeah. now that I know. But, but like, it's they very... They draw on them. They, yeah. <laughs> they draw on them. Maybe I'll insert a bit here so you can see what I'm talking about, but... Yeah, do with a little... Yeah. yeah, you wouldn't know it was them. No, so I didn't really know what to expect, but they're literally the most normal people ever. Like, but so cool, like very into music, like more yeah. than you would expect. And they are very good songwriters. They like I've met them at a studio when I was with I was working with this guy called Jimmy Nate, who's like a big songwriter. And we were just in the studio, and then they kind of walked past and then they were like oh hey like how are you like, and they introduced themselves and they didn't say they were disclosure so I was like oh hey like yeah cool people and then they were like oh let's get in session and I was like oh cool 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 and when we got in then my manager was like oh this is like you've got, got a session with disclosure and I was like wait what <laughs> like, well, these aren't just normal people like no okay and but they're just so nice and um they write their songs really organically they write it all on the piano and then they're like um, produce it up after really um, I which is that. really good I think that's really rare as well like especially with DJs and like just producers like in general I'd have never expected that no. from, especially from Disclosure yeah yeah because they're very like they're very electronic but yeah they're really nice guys and just not caught up in being like famous or, like literally just 
very into music and they do it because they really want to do it yeah which is nice that's so good mm. and then have you worked with anyone else that you really like admire obviously you don't have to say them but <laughs> is it, has that been a weird thing you've had to learn to deal with or does yeah. that just not really happen is it kind of like like I've wrote with a few writers that I've really wanted to get in with or like I love the song that they wrote, but I won't know that they wrote it until I'm in the session. Oh, really? Yeah. Do they, well, how do they, they don't, like, name drop it, do they? They or just kind like, of, like, I don't know, who was it? When oh, I yeah, wrote so, with started up. Yeah, like, yeah. well, you'll just, like, go to their house and you'll see plaques and you're like, oh. Oh, my God, okay. yeah. <laughs> and it changes everything. Like, it really does. Like, when you go to a session and it's kind of like an up-and-coming, like, producer, you feel very relaxed, you feel very, like, this is cool, this is, like, we'll just, just do what we want. Yeah. But then when it's, like a person who's wrote a song that's really famous and you just kind of think oh god like I need to be good and like yeah. not be <laughs> annoying <laughs> so yeah but I've wrote with a few people that I, I really like their songs and I think they're great like and this one particular guy who I really really love and he's just very down to earth and just normal and I love that that's so good yeah, really yeah. Nice. I remember walking into a studio one time and seeing um, the Natasha Bedingfield unwritten plaque oh and being like because um, I um, me and like a couple of my friends are obsessed with the song These Words we just think oh it's a God. really good it's song. The best song ever yeah it's like kind of tongue in cheek that we love it <laughs> but it is so good and I saw that he'd done it and I was like I don't know. <gasps> <Right there. laughs> <Should it be? laughs> very exciting um, and like Kylie and stuff and when you see that kind of a thing I always think like that's really it's that's massive. It. Yeah, it's it's enormous. Like the cultural impact that mm. kind of a song had. But ninety percent of the time, they'll be decent people. They'll just be like, yeah, just yeah. wrote that song and then it blew up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do feel like that's how people. I always thought that. Well, there's two kinds of people. I think there's mm. the kind of people who are like, as soon as I wrote it, I knew it was going to be a hit. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then there are people who are like, I assume none of my songs will be hits. And it magically and it just happens. magically happened, yeah. yeah. And I do love it when it just magically happens. Yeah. I think they're like the best people. <laughs> do you think you've written any, yeah, oh my God, do you think you've written any songs that you've heard and you've been like, this is it? Or do you think all of them, or, or some of them? All of them, right? <laughs> <laughs> or some people do, though. Like, I'd imagine the Kanye's of the world. Oh, and like, I listened yeah. to a podcast with Charlie Puth in it recently. I think Charlie Puth is so talented. He is very talented, to be honest. Yeah, and but he talks about like writing attention and it kind of just being like he didn't necessarily know if it would do well, mm -hmm. but he knew it was a hit yeah. in terms of he'd he written a, a good really song. good song. Yeah, um, yeah. I think that's cool. Like if I know when I'm like onto something good and I'm like, okay, this could be really cool, but I'll never think like I want this to be a smash hit. Like I just think it can be a bit cringy sometimes, <laughs> and I think it's always good to just make sure that you're doing it for yourself. Yeah, and you're doing what you actually want to do, not just because you think it's going to make radio or it's going to make like everyone listen. And are you the sort of writer as well? I also find this really interesting about writers, where they go into a session, and they're like, "Oh, I want to write a song that sounds like this," or sounds like, let's say you've been listening to loads of Scissor, you're like, "I want to sound like Scissor today." Mm, yeah. Um, do you take that angle ever, or are you very much like, "I want to sound like Liv Dawson"? I'll have some inspired from. I have Scissor. like a bit of both. I'll, I'll listen to like music. I've been really into like. Scandi pop at the moment. Like, oh yeah, well like Sigrid. Oh yeah, like, Astrid, that's really yeah, good. Yeah, Sigrid, like Tovalo. Yeah. And I'll listen to their songs and I'll be like, oh, this is so cool because I think the production is so clean and like really cool. Um, but then I, I really don't like it when producers are like, okay, like, can you sing it like them? And I'm like, no, yeah. that's just where it stops. <laughs> I'm yeah. Sorry. So you need to keep part of you definitely, and just like that's why I love being involved with the production and like sit next right next to the producer and be really annoying like no don't do that yeah. and they're just like oh okay yeah but it's the best way of getting your opinion across and to make yeah. it sound like you and I guess you had no sorry I just have so many questions now I'm so interested <laughs> you know yeah I guess you didn't have a any kind of production background before you started doing sessions mm -hmm. do you feel like now you are able to express what you're trying to say with the correct terminology and stuff like that or do you kind of have to go, no, I want it to sound more wompy. <laughs> Literally, yeah. Like, like, I, I know more. sometimes I know, like, certain keywords. Yeah. <laughs> like, I know what side chain is. Which yeah, is I just cool. learned what side chain is recently. <laughs> I love it. And I'm like, put side chain on all of my songs. Yeah. Um, and they're like, okay. Um, but sometimes I'll be like, can you do, like, the sound? <laughs> and they're like, okay. <laughs> Got that. In one of my songs, I literally put it out. It has a, like, a sound like... 
and then um, I actually said that to them and they were like okay <laughs> so I'm like that's my little production key oh I love that <laughs> I think so I think it goes one of two ways again I think it's some people I probably like you and me <laughs> will be like oh I want the, this kind of a sound and make it with their <laughs> mouth or try and explain it like Oh, I like it when the waveform looks like that, yeah. not that. Yeah, I don't know. Waveforms I, don't make mean anything. I'm just like, no, I don't know what that means. <laughs> Whereas I think some people, as soon as they, if they come from a writing background, as soon as they see the technical stuff, they're like, great, I can learn exactly how to mm. translate what I'm creating. Yeah, that would be really helpful. Like I've had a, like a few producers saying like, maybe you should get into producing just because like you have good ideas, so like it would make sense. But I'm just like. It's just another stress, really. Yeah. <laughs> but I think also it's very, very, very hard. Really hard. And I'm trying to teach myself logic, and I'm like, this is good. You know, yeah. I can I can do the very bare bones, <laughs> yeah. very bare bones. Yeah. But there's a reason producers are producers. It's taken them. It takes years. so much time. Yeah. Oh it takes god, a yeah. A lot of time of just locking yourself away and listening to beats over and over again and yeah. watching YouTube videos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lots of YouTube videos. Mm. Oh yeah, I was gonna ask as well. You're into YouTube a little bit, right? Yeah. Like, I like uh, it a lot. <laughs> yeah. What kind of... I asked you this kind of already before. <laughs> but, like, what kind of things are you into? Just I yeah. really like watching makeup videos. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Secretly wish I was a makeup artist. <laughs> um, and I love blogs. I think I love it when, like, YouTubers really, like, take you into their, like, world for the day. Yeah. And, like, I love, like, morning routines or, like, evening oh, routines. You love it's good morning so routines. It's yeah. And you're just like, oh, like, it's so nice. And it, like, <laughs> I love just make, like, it's kind of, like, organised and, like, I love, yeah, like, seeing into people's, like, worlds. Especially, like, YouTubers, because it is a completely different world, like, from what my world is. It's like, yeah. I am always around people. And, like, you were saying, like, you kind of are, like, barely around people, like, a lot yeah. of the time. I'm very much, like, a lone wolf when it comes to working now, which yeah. was so not what I expected. No, yeah. I assumed YouTubers had to be around people 24-7, yeah. in a similar way to you, because you have to work with people to create the art, yeah. and then to do all the admin stuff, and, yeah. The, yeah, all the... I don't... Do you know what? I have no real idea of all the admin stuff entails. For me, that is just <laughs> emails, basically. Yeah. Emails and meetings. But, yeah, meetings photo shoots I yeah. guess all that kind of stuff where you have to it all comes with it yeah yeah create your your image and your package yeah oh yeah Definitely. how have you found that because as a I want to talk more as well because you are a young woman in the music mm-hmm. industry and you're also someone who's very promising and up and coming and having spoken to other young women who have been in the music industry I think a lot of them felt like they were being put into certain boxes or like uh, certain people, not the people closest to them, mm-hmm. but the people who have who have some say, mm-hmm. kind of tried to shape their image or their sound in yeah, other ways. Have you found you've had to come, had to deal with some of that adversity or do you feel like that's upcoming or how are you feeling I, about it? <laughs> yeah, like I definitely make my opinions known like in my circle and I have quite a good team around me like my manager definitely like listens to me and you know he is like a feminist like he he definitely respects women in the way that like they have a voice as well I don't treat me any different Um, but I think it yeah you can definitely get try and get molded into something you're not but I think it's just about standing for what you believe in and like even if it is being like no I'm not doing that and then they're like okay but we'll drop you and you're like okay fine like you know just being very stuck with your like just true to yourself really and just doing it for your benefit because it's not really going to benefit anyone else but like but yourself like if you stay true to yourself but like I don't know I came off stage um after a show once and I was really ill and I probably didn't perform my best but I was really ill yeah (laughs) and um someone came over to me after and they were like Oh, like we we like you just really tired. Like, what's wrong with you? And just being like, you know, I'm I've just come off stage. I don't feel very well, um, but people do notice. But like, you know, I was ill, so yeah. I am enjoying what I'm doing. But <laughs> yeah, no, of course. Um, but yeah, it's the fact that someone feels entitled to ask. That's a little yeah, bit scary. Yeah, because it's like it's fu- it's not too bad. Yeah. But then what what would they ask if it was bad? Yeah. Like if your performance yeah. had not been good yeah like but that's why I feel like being a woman in the industry is like like people do feel like they're entitled to like say 
I don't know, like, I've had a few people say to me, like, like, what is wrong with your voice today, like, or whatever, and I'm just like, like, don't say <gasps> oh, that, like, and it's oh always, it is men, like, yeah. it's always, like, you know, it's, I feel like women, like, definitely get each other, Yeah. and sometimes like, I do get that, like, men don't understand women, but, like, it's coming from a bit more of a sensitive place, like, you need to be a bit more sensitive, like, asking women, like, questions and stuff but I've had it a lot like where people just feel like they can say what they want to me and I'm just like no <laughs> oh I guess yeah I feel like there's also this this like overriding opinion of like oh there's so many young women coming up in the music industry mm. they're all like uh like what's the word uh prints of each other like replicas oh. like gingerbread men I feel like that's such a myth oh. like there are not that many women doing this in fact there's, there's literally women. such a thing about it at the moment like I've heard so many like women's like talk about it and like had people say like putting them into categories of like three girls and they're like oh they just sound like another like this and that and then they're just like no like I'm myself like I'm not trying to be anyone else like just because girls do pop it's not the same pop like completely different it's such a wide spectrum of pop like Like, can you imagine putting Tove Low and like even just like Charlie XCX in the same box, like it's so it's so different. different. And it's yeah, I mean, I love Charlie XCX at the moment. Yeah, I, I think she's that. like maybe my favorite pop music yeah. maker. Yeah, yeah, she's really good. But yeah, I just think like it always feels like these people, these women are kind of when there's one big woman at the top, all the others get sidelined yeah. and told like, oh, well, like you can make mixtapes or like, you know, we don't, oh, we don't have any money for you right now. Yeah, and yeah. It's, out. It's very, it's very hard. Like, and it's been going on for quite a while. Like, I remember, kind of like when Jess Glynn was like smashing it. Yeah. There was a lot of like side women that like were just being pushed to the side, like because everyone, everyone's eyes were on Jess Glynn, which is amazing. I think she's amazing, but it was not fair for like everyone kind of trying at the same time to be pushed aside because they're completely different. They should all have their their time. Exactly. Jess Glynn has such a distinct style as well. Yeah. And her voice is so yeah. distinctive yeah. that I can't imagine there was anyone else coming up at the same time who even had her voice. It's really crazy, and it is just like because you wouldn't put a guy in the same like part like section as her. No, it exactly. would all be girls. Yeah, I mean, oh no, we can't have a Sam Smith. We got a Jess Glynn. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, it doesn't make any sense. No. Why it's like, oh, yeah, it's frustrating. Mm. I'm gonna check and see if I've got anything else here. <laughs> check your list. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, um, um. Uh, oh, oh my god, I think this is really interesting because you're at a point where you've had some interest, in fact, quite a lot of interest online, but you haven't necessarily like broken in the typical sense of like, oh my god, my singles are over Radio One and you yeah. know, that kind of thing. Yeah. However, to your family and friends and people who know you, it's a different situation because they just see you with a team around you doing uh, loads of writing and you're making music for your living and yeah. all of this stuff. How have you found that that experience of having family and friends, maybe, have they treated you any differently? Or do they talk about your job in a certain way that feels yeah. really weird? Um, I feel like my family, they're very normal. So, like, they've never... I don't have... There's no singers in the family. There's no, like, creatives, like, in my family. Like, they all have, like, pretty normal jobs. Like, my mum, like, works in the hairdressers, and then my dad's a builder. So, like, yeah. they're literally normal. So they find it, like, very bizarre, and they always want to know, like, what's going on, because they're just like, so, like, update us, like, <laughs> what what's your life saying now? Yeah. And now that I've moved out, like, I get texts daily from my mum, like, oh, what yeah. are you doing? <laughs> and, but yeah, like, my, my grandparents especially, they don't understand it, like, they're yeah. just like, you write songs? Like, what's your other job? Like, that's cute. <laughs> and, but they find it really, like... I don't know, they just, everything I do, like, even if it's a really small thing, like, if I'm just doing, like, a little gig or, like, a pop-up gig or, they'll just be like, oh, this is amazing, like, get me tickets, like, yeah. thinking it's, like, a huge arena tour. No. <laughs> but it's cute. They love it. They don't treat me different, but they, they still, like, when I go home, I still have to, like, walk the dog. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> I find it really strange. Um, I've got my dad's 61st birthday party <laughs> coming up oh, next gosh. week, and... Obviously, my parents are so proud of me. They're really great people. I adore them. Um, and they talk, you know, they talk about my job to people. Yeah. But it involves a lot of, when we go to those those mm-hmm. parties, there's a lot of, 
oh, so your parents have told me you do this. Yeah. And for me, the question is, you're a YouTuber or you make YouTube videos because a, a YouTuber is not a concept to a lot of these people. Um, and they're, like, they're like, how do you make money and how much money do you earn? Oh, I get that's my big it's question. It's the worst question because yeah. you're just like... I don't know, like, what do you want me to say? Yeah. Like, it's not, it's like any other, it's hard to explain, like, it's not. Also, the idea of celebrity to them is like, oh, so you're famous to young people, and I guess you must get that of, yeah, people, yeah. like, people who don't really understand go, oh, so you must be famous now, and it's like, no, not really. really. <laughs> kind of patronising in a way. Yeah. But um, I, my, like, best way of dealing with it is just asking them how much money they make instead of answering. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I have a lot of, like, come on, let, like, why don't you sing at the party? Oh, and my God, that was like, like, oh. No, like, this is my day off. Like, I, no. Oh. <laughs> I literally had a gig yesterday, like, and th- they get really annoyed when you don't do it. It's like, you feel like, I feel like a lot of people think they're entitled to, like, you. Yeah. And just, like, using you, like, because you have a job like that. And, like, you, I'm sure you get people like, oh, can I come and, like, on the show yeah random people you're like okay yeah no. fortunately that's kind of died off but that was really big like maybe like two or three years ago of people yeah. being like would you mind just retweeting my GoFundMe and I'm like yeah I mean if we'd spoken in the last three years of course yeah, yeah, <laughs> but definitely. I don't know you yeah um yeah I know what you mean poor old Dodie uh my friend Dodie I brought her she's a singer as well I brought her back to my parent my dad's six, probably 59th birthday party it was about two or three years ago I brought her along and this really nice neighbour of mine thought it would be really great to sit Dodie down and make her sing the Sound of Music soundtrack. Uh, so this woman got on piano, was playing the piano and made Dodie harmonise with her. And I, I'd obviously been doing all the socialising stuff. And I walk, walked in afterwards, or kind of like midway through, I was like, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. Because <laughs> Dodie's too nice Just to say no. Away. <laughs> yeah, I felt so bad. It's so funny. Um, no, it's just... It is hard, because I get that normal people, they don't understand it, and they just think, oh, it's nothing, like, just sing. Yeah. Like, but it's quite a scary thing, like, just yeah. singing in front of people. And it'll be because they're proud of you as well, and they're, they're yeah. proud of knowing you and what you're, what you're able to do. And they want to get involved. Yeah, exactly. Which is really cute, but... Yeah, you're kind of like, not today. <laughs> yeah. Maybe another day. <laughs> um, yeah, and also, yeah, just do you... This is kind of basically what we've spoken about before, but, like, being treated differently in the music industry as well do you find like uh, people treat you very normally or do you sometimes find that if people know what you do they treat you differently to how they might otherwise or yeah. like if they've heard a song of yours yeah do you feel like you notice that at all I was definitely like I was talking about this to I think it was my boyfriend but we were just saying like I used to go to events um, and go to shows like when I was like hadn't released any music I was pretty young and I'd go with my manager and like you would just get like not even looked at no one would even look at you yeah and then now that like I have been putting out music like I'm a bit more grown up like I'm you know I know what I'm doing and I know certain people they'll kind of chat to you now and you're just like you never used to speak to me like don't do this now and it's it's very daunting like being quite like small and young and like especially being a girl like just within like going to shows going to events and like not knowing anyone and not really being at that level where people are like oh I know what you do I know your song like just kind of being new to it and having to like work for it work work for like a conversation oh it must be stressful especially as I bet you there's like you end up talking to like A&Rs and stuff or people who (laughs) the the people who know you are people who know lots of new music or Mm. they've heard you from well like yourself they like yourself so just be in the know. music industry mainly yeah, yeah. yeah. and it would be like people are, oh yeah it was on new music friday three weeks ago blah, 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 blah. yeah yeah <laughs> i can imagine that being just like yeah, yeah. but can we have a conversation yeah. about something that's interesting that's not music or yeah. like <laughs> <laughs> totally yeah right let me see um i've pretty much done everything you know i yeah, I've covered everything yeah, I wanted to questions. cover. Yeah, no, I just had like four or five because I, oh, you know what my final one is actually? I always ask people kind of at the end, I say like, if you had any advice to people who want to get into your industry or like do something similar to what you do, what advice would you give? Mm-hmm. I would say like, I mean, the way that I've done it was gigging and like just going out there and putting yourself out there and networking is really good, but also like taking time 
into like writing as many songs as you can and like just being like finding your sound and finding your feet and yeah just like go out like find new friends like who are in the industry or like socialize a little bit more but also just write as many songs as you can yeah and that will help you a lot you yeah know, the, the can basics. you see your progression now from the first like let's say from tapestry which isn't your first song but was the first song that was released all the way to yeah. now yeah. like is your progression just like yeah <laughs> i literally go into sessions and I'm like, right, okay, so I have a range from, like, tapestry, and then I have a range from talk, so like, they're like, okay, completely different songs, yeah. Um, but yeah, I definitely feel like I've grown, and I'm more me now, like, I know exactly, like, where I want to be, what I want to do, and what kind of songs I want to make, and yeah. And that is just a process, you just have to keep going with that. Definitely, like it I, takes a while. And it will keep changing as well. Oh yeah. You'll find something you're comfortable with, but I don't think you'll ever find like the thing that you're like, this is so clearly ultimately me. No, it's <laughs> not. there's not one category that you can put yourself into, it'll be like loads of different categories, but you'll find something, whatever you're happy doing at that time, then do it. Yeah. Because it's just, it just makes it more fun. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Aww, it's been so nice you. to have you in the kitchen so and having fun. brunch. In the new kitchen. Yeah, is there anything that's coming up that you'd like to mention? I always ask people, but these aren't usually <laughs> these are the kind of people that come on the show that are like, yes, my new dad and I are coming out now. <laughs> but do you have a single coming out soon? Um, are you doing any shows? So I'm doing the Great Escape Festival. Are you actually? Uh, yeah. I might be there. Go <laughs> oh, see me. I will, I will. Um, yeah, so I'm doing that. I think it's on like the. 16th or the 18th something um and then i've got the hyde park bst oh my god who who are you supporting um so i'm like on the same stage as tom walker um i'm not sure like it's it's supporting bruno mars like he's that day so i'm just gonna watch him and have the best day (laughs) our friend lauren went and did um did high park and got to be on the same stage as taylor swift and i remember that just being like but she proper I, the whole story is in our podcast but like taylor invited her into her into her van wow. like, and like they all hung out and it was all these people wow. and so i'm bruno I'm, mars yeah bring it on the good luck for bruno <laughs> <laughs> like, like come on bruno exactly. hold out this time yeah. invite me to your van yeah oh that would be so good yeah i'm so excited yeah so fun. yeah Thanks so much for watching, Carl. Yeah. Thanks for being here. And I will see you in my next video. Yay! Yay. <laughs> oh, and I'll leave all your social channels in the links. Okay. Oh, all the bad so stuff. Fun.